everyone. All right, so in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to take green screen footage like this directly into Adobe Premiere Pro. We'll be doing some quick and easy chroma keying just to get rid of the green background, and we'll be saving it out in a very specific format that Blender will be able to recognize. So that means you can actually bring that footage directly into Blender and create this combination of 2D and 3D. And if you actually position your camera strategically, you can make it look as if this footage is actually real. It looks like this cat is really existing within this 3D environment. But if I actually move around over here, you can see that this is a flat plane, but everything else is 3D. So it's a really interesting way to use green screen footage with Blender. And I've actually used this quite a bit with some of my recent projects. You can see over here with these Charmanders, uh, the flames over here is a 2D chroma keyed uh, video. There's the same thing over here with this arcade machine. And over here with this tribute to the PlayStation, Spyro the Dragon over there, he is green screen footage that was cut out. And the same thing with this claw machine and Pikachu. So you can do so much awesome stuff with green screen footage in Blender. This is going to be a very basic introduction, but it should unlock a world of potential and possibilities for you. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so where can we find green screen footage? And you're already on the correct platform. There's tons of green screen footage on YouTube. All you need to do is just search for green screen footage and you'll see you'll get a whole lot of different results. Uh, but I've already provided a link to this video of this cat. All right, so check the link in the description or top comments so that you can go ahead to this video. And then I want you to head over to another website that's called ytmp3.cc or YouTube to MP3 Converter because you'll actually be able to download this video from that website. Now, whenever you're downloading videos like this, obviously pay attention to the licensing information. Some people upload stuff like this ro royalty free, so you can use it commercially or non-commercially, but you definitely want to respect the licensing. So anyway, you'll grab the URL from this video. You'd go to YouTube to MP3 Converter, paste the URL over here, make sure this is on MP4, and then click on Convert. So it's going to convert that, and you'll be able to download that video. Now go ahead and open up Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm using Premiere Pro CC 2018. I know I still need to upgrade, but for me, this version works really well. And all you need to do is just click on new project. All right, so I'm gonna create a new project over here. These are going to be my default settings. Okay, and I'll just call this green screen cat and click on okay. Okay, so go ahead and drag and drop that MP4 file into Premiere Pro. So I'll drag and drop it over here and then drag that onto my timeline. So you'll see if I scrub forward, we've got our cat. So I've got the effects tab selected over here and to do some quick chroma keying so we can isolate this cat, in the search bar, you just want to type ultra and we're going, to, we're going to be using ultra key. So drag and drop that onto the footage. And if I just zoom in over here, you can see there's, there's an audio track as well. So if I right click and just unlink this and delete the audio track because we just want the footage. Now make sure the footage is selected and you'll see yes, ultra key and then key color. We just click on this eyedropper tool and select the green. So now when I scrub forward, the cat has officially been isolated. Okay, and one more tip if you're doing chroma keying, sometimes you'll notice videos that you download don't take up this entire region. You might actually see some black borders over here. So when you actually chroma key out uh, the footage, there'll actually be a seam that's going to be visible and you need to make sure you actually remove that seam uh, because that will be visible in Blender. So one tool you can use over here under the search bar is crop. So if you had to drag and drop a crop onto the footage, you could literally crop this left and right. And if there was a seam visible over here, you could crop it away and you'd be good to go. But I thought I would mention that because that's actually quite important. But in this case, this video took up this entire region. So this is perfect. It's good to go. And let's export this out of Premiere Pro. So you'll go to File, Export Media, now you want to change your format to QuickTime and I have a preset over here called Transparent Background Video. So I save this as a preset, but let me just show you all of the settings under this preset and we'll only be focusing on video. Okay, so my video, co uh, my video codec is GoPro Cineform. Okay, my quality is on 5. I'm rendering at maximum depth and I'm using maximum render quality. So once you have those exact same settings, Maybe go ahead and save this as a QuickTime preset as well so that you can use it again in the, in the future whenever you exporting out chroma keyed videos. And then just click on export and you are good to go. And we can head over to Blender. 
Okay, so here's my exporter.mov file and we can actually import this into Blender. So open up Blender. The first thing you need to do is you need to enable an add-on that's already included with Blender. So go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons. And over here just type Images and you'll get this Import, Export, uh, Images as Planes. Make sure this is ticked and then you'll have the option to import Images as Planes. So now if I press F3, it brings up the search menu and if I just type in Images, you'll see over here we get this import images as planes. As soon as I click on that, I'm going to go to the desktop and here is my .mov file. So you can already see that the cat is isolated, the background has been removed, I don't need to adjust anything else over here, I just click on import images as planes and there we go, it's imported our footage with the cat isolated. So right now it looks like we don't see anything and that's because we need to change our viewport shading to the material preview. And there we go. So it looks like we still don't see anything in our scene, but if I scrub forward, you will eventually see that cat showing itself in our viewport. Or if I click play, there we go. There's our cat jumping. Okay, so first thing that I usually do is, uh, so that I get this to repeat, I'll go to shading. Let me just pause that. I'll go to shading. And here is our video file, right? The .mov file. I'll put it on cyclic. So cyclic means that it's going to repeat itself over and over. So it doesn't matter how many frames over here, it'll constantly repeat. And we've got our cat jumping within the viewport. You'll see if I hide the overlays. And just click on play. There we go. So isn't that cool? It's completely isolated. And now we've got this 2D version of the cat directly within a 3D viewport in Blender and I'm using EV over here just so I get to see my end results immediately. Uh, just one more tip, you'll see if I click on play that the playback of this video is really smooth. There's no stuttering or anything like that. And if you do see stuttering, it's just the program, you know, analyzing and just processing the video. Uh, but once you just let it play through the entire animation, so just click on play and let it go through all the frames, you'll get back this nice smooth feedback that you can constantly see within your workspace. Okay, so we are officially done. The sky is the limit now when it comes to green screen footage. But just to show you some other general tips whenever you import green screen footage, something that I always do is, let me just press Shift A and create a cube and just place this behind the cat. And I'm also going to go to my rendered view over here and I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to bring in a point light. And let me just select this cube as well and just scale this out a little bit more. So I want to show you something regarding the shadows whenever light is being cast against a video that's playing. Okay, so I'll just select the light over here and maybe put this on, let's say, 60. So here's our cat. Now you'll notice whenever I'm moving this video around that the shadow that's being cast, casted is from the actual, you know, aspect ratio of the video. And that, that obviously looks that, that looks terrible and we want to try and isolate just the cat shadow being casted from the light. So how do we do that? Select the video, go to your material preview and scroll down over here until you find shadow mode. And then just change this to alpha clip. And there we go. Now we got an accurate shadow of the actual cat being casted from the light. So that is super cool. So whenever this cat is moving, look at that, we get the, we get the actual shadow uh, you know, an actual proper rep representation of the cat shadow being casted. So that's something I always do with green screen footage. I'll just select that and always put that on alpha clip. And now if I zoom in over here and we look at the cat, you'll see that it almost looks a little bit blurry. If you want this to look very crisp, uh, all you have to do is by the blend mode, change this to alpha clip. And now it's like a really crisp uh, cutout of the cat itself. So it depends on what you're trying to achieve with the overall look. Maybe you like the fact that it's blurred a little bit with Alpha Blend, uh, but I thought I would just mention that. So that's how you fix the shadows uh, being casted from the light with green screen footage. And then another tip, you can see with this video, we've only got the cat moving from a side angle. So it wouldn't make much sense to see this maybe from a three quarter. It really depends on how you're using the screen screen footage. You have to be quite strategic with how you use it because at the end of the day, this is just a flat plane, right? If you completely break the perspective, whoever's viewing this footage might be like, wait, why does this look completely flat? Why does this look 2D? It also depends on the aesthetic. 
Uh, and with the aesthetic I was going for with my arcade machines and the claw machines, I wanted almost this 2D uh, aesthetic and I thought it looks pretty cool. But if you're going for something more realistic, you definitely have to be strategic with your camera angles. So with a camera that's front facing, especially with this cat, it would look a lot more believable uh, than something else. And you can see even the lighting is reacting with our plane. So if I press uh, Shift D and just uh, duplicate this light and maybe change a color over here to blue, you'll see that when the cat moves from the white, you can see we've got this white light shining on the cat. And as it moves into the blue, we get a little bit of that blue being casted on our cat as well. So this could be really cool. Maybe if you were doing a video, you've got this cat over here. So let's see how it jumps. I can even angle the plane like this. So maybe you've got this video that you're recording where you want it to look like there's this cat in the scene that's actually jumping onto another platform. And this is this is the power of using green screen footage. It's super awesome uh, that you can cre create this illusion of an actual representation of something else that's real, that's interacting with 3D geometry. So it kind of looks like this cat has jumped and landed on this platform. So very cool stuff uh, that you can do with Blender. And there we go. And the fact that the, the lights react with this as well is quite cool. And you can go to shading if you want to. And you can also adjust some of the metallic values over here to see how that reacts with lighting. Maybe you want to decrease some of the roughness or increase some of that. Play around with some of these settings. But I, would, I thought I would just show you quickly how to export out the videos and bring it into Blender. So sky's the limit now. Have fun. Maybe build a little obstacle course for this cat. Uh, have him jumping onto platforms. And the fact that you can do this in real time with EV and see this playback is incredible. I think this is so cool that you can do this in Blender. Right, so here's the same scene with this cat. I just made the obstacle course a little bit more complex, put some more uh, point lights over there. And I also decided that with the footage, I actually wanted to completely remove the metallic and the specular because I felt like the lighting looked a little, looked a little bit more realistic with the way that it, uh, that it actually reacted. You can see these blue lights are shining on the cat. And as it gets over here, we've got this really cool white light that starts shining on the cat as well. Okay, and it's just completely a 2D plane. Uh, but if you're trying to create shots like this with real footage, that you can use directly within a 3D workspace and do it in real time with EV. I think that is super, super cool. So I thought I would just cover this entire process to show you what's possible with green screen footage. But if you definitely want to see something more in depth, if you want to see how you can really push these techniques, go and check out Ian Hubert. He has some incredible videos on using green screen footage with Blender. I highly recommend his tutorials. The guy is amazing. Uh, but I just wanted to show you quickly that you can chroma key out the videos with Premiere Pro and then import it into Blender using the images as planes. Okay, so that's going to be the end of the tutorial. Now with the scene, I made it a little bit more complex. I used some assets from Megascans, brought them into Blender. I'm also using a plugin over here called Physical Atmosphere, which adds this really cool lighting into my scene. And you can see the shadows and everything updates. And on Eevee, also make sure if you've got uh, like objects in your scene, if you feel like the shadows and that are not uh, dark enough, Always go back to EV and you can go to ambient occlusion. By default, this is on 0.2. I put mine all the way up to 50 and look how it looks on 0.2. And now look how it looks on 50. All right, we get a much better representation with these, uh, these shadows over here or what's supposed to look like contact shadows between the geometry and this back plane. Okay, so just making it a little bit more complex and in the rendering, I even animated a little bit of a camera over here that zooms in just a little bit and it's going to we're going to see this black cat jumping from one platform over to the other and I strategically place this pillow over here because this is where the video cuts out right and again being strategic with my camera angles but you can see just how powerful it is to use green screen footage directly in Blender it's super fun to do and now you know how to do it as well but definitely go and check out Ian Hubert he has some really in-depth uh, tutorials on green screen footage but I wanted to just show you quickly how to set this up and you can see it's actually quite easy to do 
Anyway, I truly appreciate the support on this channel. You guys are super awesome. Stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials and goodbye.